that the health, fiscal health of the state is coming on the groove from where it was earlier. It required a lot of uh, management by the administration. Uh, we have definitely taken the burden of managing the uh, state police's expenditure and substantial financial support for a state of 17,000 crore in this budget has been extended. As a result of these kind of steps that we have taken, sitting with the um, UT Jammu Kashmir authorities, I can tell you that the fiscal deficit of the GS GSDP is es estimated to fall to about 3% in 24-25, which is remarkable, I would think, and uh, I would appreciate the, the ofi officials who are managing the economy in JNK to have completely removed the legacy problems that they had and to get the economy on, uh, on course. I think they have done remarkable, uh, very detailed, going to detail kind of a work and JNK administration therefore require, requires one word of appreciation from this August House. So with, broadly with these uh, summary remarks on the appropriation bill and also Jammu and Kashmir, I would like to come to the first section of responding to honorable members who have spoken on the JNK appropriation and also on the uh, appropriation bill of our budget this year before I talk on the finance bill related observations of honorable members. Sir, uh, Honorable Member Digvijay Singh had raised quite a few concerns. I can't see him here, but the issues that he raised, um, he raised quite a few points, uh, largely I thought were coming from the political in interpretation of what he sees through the budget process, but three of which I want to respond to, sir. First of all, um, he seemed to be impressed by the Global Hunger Index. It is, and I've said this in this uh, house earlier, also in the Lok Sabha, it's a flawed index. Their calculation is completely uh, inexplicable. They can't stand up and say why it is so for some countries, why it is slightly different for some other countries. If I would just lay the examples before you and therefore say why I am questioning it, as a flawed index, I, that will ex explain enough to answer um, Honorable Member Digvijay Singh. So conflict-ridden countries like Sudan, Malawi, Burkina Faso, Burkina Faso, Burkina Faso and Mali are all higher than us in, our, in the index. Pakistan too is higher than us in, in the index. Uh, nothing wrong with countries being above us if they have to be there and uh, I don't grudge it. But then they are higher than the, us, knowing very well the economy is there, have serious basic problems. The index does not explain as to how these countries are higher. And when we say we've taken care of feeding the poorest of the poor, and not getting into the numbers because they would say, oh, 80 crore of your people are poor. I'm not getting into that. But ensuring that nobody remains hungry, we have ensured distributing grains for 80 crore people since 2020. And it seems that the Global Hunger Index has not taken that on board. Whereas when people are standing, the poorest of poor people are standing for corn and starch flow in Mali, in queues and also in for ATA in Pakistan, that economy seems to be defeating global hunger index uh, lower rankings and going up whereas we are put somewhere below. So I would want to highlight to Honorable Member Digvijay Singh that you please question based on studies that you do in this country and we are willing to answer but this index is flawed. The global hunger index is flawed. Now, the, the recent report, National Family Health Survey, that is 1921, 2019-2021, the nutrition indicators for children under five years old have improved compared with NFHS 
4, this is NFHS 5 that we are talking about, NFHS 4, with, which was uh, the, the period to which it relates is 2015-16, whereas this one that I'm talking about is 2019-21. Stunting has reduced from 38.4% to 35.5% in India. Wasting among children, wasting has reduced from 21.0% to 19.3%. Underweight prevalence has reduced from 35.8% to 32.1%. These are very, very, um, uh, very uh, revetted numbers which if we have to remove and bring them lower, a lot of effort is required. These are very, very entrenched numbers. But now these numbers are showing that there is a clear sign of coming down. It is because of nutrition reaching these families and therefore this hunger index has got to uh, be reviewed and I wouldn't want Honorable Member Digvijay Singh to rely so much on a flawed index. So the next issue that he also highlighted was net financial household savings are lowest. So I want to highlight the fact that country is witnessing a lot of change in terms of smart portfolio diversification. Small savings are also finding portfolios which are giving them better returns. So they may not be sitting in a post office or they may not be sitting in a public sector bank, a savings account or small time fixed deposit. They are finding different portfolios which are giving us uh, probably better returns. Every individual decides for themselves. They are also investing in property and property improvements. So they may be living in a small house which has a bedroom and a kitchen and so on. Now they are investing in making one more additional room to their houses. So money is going so not into the deposit. Sometimes it is going for asset creation. Those don't get counted at all. And even better, sir, uh, when we were talking about racializing uh, capital gains tax, the number of people who came back to say, why are you now even uh, bringing in a small increase in the futures and options, the trading that happens in futures and options. And I was surprised when people who told me were very middle class people. I said, the futures and options, you'd expect people who have that kind of a disposable income to trade in futures and options. But people have become smarter. They are able to make sense of it. They are better informed even probably to put money there and get smaller returns for themselves. And therefore today, small saving is alone, not the portfolio. People have found different portfolios which are helping them. So I need to highlight the fact that financial household savings today will have to include, when you're counting that, you will have to include the other portfolios which are available for small families. So growth in housing sales in cities has been particularly impressive, indicating that urban households are diversifying the deployment of their savings. In 2023, residential real estate sales in India were at their highest since 2013, witnessing a 33% year-on-year growth with a total sale of 4.1 lakh units in top eight cities. So people are moving to thinking in terms of having their savings become investment into properties and also into portfolios which give them better uh, returns.